this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at one of my favorite notebooks. This is the Lenovo ThinkPad X230. This is one of the first Ivy Bridge laptops on the market. 12.5 inch display, 3 pounds, and the usual great stuff that ThinkPads offer. Awesome keyboard, durable build, lots of configurable options, and interesting things like this. For those of you who feel like a display can never tilt back far enough, well, this is the one for you. So this is the Lenovo ThinkPad X230. What's so special about it? Well, other than being the follow-up to our editor's choice for 2011, the Lenovo ThinkPad X220, and uh, many other periodicals like that notebook a lot too, this guy has Intel third generation Ivy Bridge CPU inside. That's right, finally Ivy Bridge in a laptop. And we should start seeing this being available for order in around the first week of June or so. Now here's the weird thing. Intel has an embargo going on for the notebook CPUs, so we can't actually tell you what model number it is. Okay, so that's like slightly weird. And they prefer that we not share benchmarks, though I know ASUS has been allowing some folks to share benchmarks of their Ivy Bridge notebooks, but we'll give you a ballpark idea. And we can say this is third generation Intel CPU in here, Ivy Bridge, and it is a Core i5. The, the notebook will be available with Core i3, i5, i7, as you'd expect from Lenovo ThinkPads. They're always very configurable. It's one of the nice things about them. You can order them with a variety of hard drive capacities, SSDs, different display technologies, 4G, 3G, you name it, you can order it with these. So let's talk about the basics first. Lenovo says that this is a three pound notebook. Our scale says is a three pound seven ounce notebook with a six cell battery, which is the middle capacity battery. They have a four cell, a six cell, and a nine cell option, just like they did with the X220, and a sheet battery options as well. It has a 12.5 inch display, and you can either get that as an LED back with 200 nit display, or a 300 nit IPS display, also 1366 by 768. That's what we have here. It's phenomenal. That's one of the things that sets the, the X220, X230 apart. Really nice, bright display, really good colors, rich, neutral, awesome for watching movies and stuff like that. No glare, it's a matte display, wide viewing angles, none of that usual, oh, I have to tilt it back, tilt it forward to find this sweet spot like you see with TN standard displays, so get that option. How much more that's going to cost is hard to say. Right now, Lenovo's only charging $50 up from the old X220, and I don't know if it's going to continue to be such a small upcharge, but anyway, you want that. That's one of the special things about this notebook. And as we showed you, not that you really need to wiggle that display back and forth to find the right angle, but given how light and portable small this thing is, you're going to use it in a variety of situations, you can flatten this all the way back to, well, beyond flat. It's kind of an interesting trick. You can terrify your friends and they'll think you're breaking your notebook, but really, no problem with it. Very sturdy hinge. In fact, this is very stiff. This is a latchless hinge design, and you really do need two hands to open and close and even adjust the tilt of the display. Whether that loosens up with time, well, we don't know yet, but it's pretty tight, tight right now. As you'd expect with a ThinkPad, marvelous keyboard. Even though it's only a 12.5 inch notebook, it's not very big. Man, I feel like a wizard when I type on this thing. It is just lovely. They moved over to more of that chiclet style keyboard that we saw on some of the ThinkPad Edge series, and uh, I'm not complaining about that. It's still a perfect isolation keyboard. Great key travel given the size of the notebook, and well, it's not super duper thin, so that does help. It gives them more leeway for that. Uh, good shaped keys. They're a little, they're not slippery, but they don't have a texture on them. That's the only thing I might like to really keep your hands homed in on that, but that's okay. Just superb. No trampolining of the keyboard deck to get in your way. Everything is just nice. Oversized enter key right here, oversized backspace key, shift keys where they should be in larger, good size space board, space bar rather. And then you've got your whole row of FN keys up here, which are interesting edge to edge design. They're not actually island isolated ones. And your usual thing, vantage button here, your hardware mute button, your hardware volume controls are up here, and your glow in the dark power button. Also, if you take a look at the keyboard, you see the FN and backlight symbol. This is not just for the LED think light, which it does still have. It has two levels of keyboard backlight. It illuminates the tops of the keys and around the edges, and it's not going to be easy to see here, but in our full review, you'll see photos of this taken in the dark, so you know what it's like. And the last position turns on the LED think light up here. Again, bright room, you're not going to see too much, but it's actually, as ever, fairly effective for illuminating the whole area here. And one more press and it's turned off again. The keys have good relief and height as you can hopefully see from this corner view. Again, we'll have some photographs that make it even more apparent for you. And something else we've got here is the usual ThinkPad Trackpad Plus. 
there, eraser stick, ultra nav pointer over here. So you can use these two buttons with this right here. You could in theory use the buttons with the trackpad. That's a little weird to have them up top here. This trackpad is small. It's not a very big notebook. I wouldn't mind if it was a little bit bigger, but it works very well. None of this quacky stuff that you see on Windows notebooks where multi-touch does freaky things or the cursor jumps around. You know, think pads. I mean, it just works. The only thing I'm not so thrilled with is the surface. It's they have a grate like on it, so it doesn't feel like the deck right here, but it feels like the kind of plastic you would have on a on a keyboard deck or on, on a lid of an average laptop. It's it's not very mm, textured in a way that I like. Not a huge deal there, just kind of doesn't feel trackpad-y. And over here, here's your fingerprint scanner for your trusted platform module for your uh, security, biometric security. And that's about it for what we're going to see on the deck right here. Up top here we have the 720p webcam and you've got a little privacy light to let you know when you're recording yourself. We don't want to have any accidents there. And if we turn it sideways you can see the lip has a curve. And this curve wraps around and meets over here. So it's a kind of interesting thing and there is a seam over here on the back. And that's probably where your wireless antennas go. Seems firmly attached to me. I know some folks with X220s have problems with this guy coming off, but it seems like it's pretty well on there. While we're looking at the lid, you can see it's your usual matte ThinkPad look. If you're into ThinkPads, you're going to think this is a really nice looking notebook. If you're not, you're going to think, wow, what a boring matte black notebook this is. And it's up to you. It's a soft touch finish. It's very grippy. It's very easy to clean. Underneath, there's a magnesium alloy roll cage, so this guy is sturdy. And you can see the big robust hinges here. And here you have indicators on the lid to show you're running on battery power, and if it's in sleep mode, well, the little crescent moon there lights up instead. Close and look on the side, you can see again how that lid lip kind of wraps around here to complete the design. One of the things that made ThinkPads look really cool in the old days was, well, the minimalist black design is kind of low-key and minimalist, and it's not out there, it's not gaudy, that it was nice. And they were relatively thin compared to other notebooks. Now, they're still thin compared to some other notebooks, but with all the Ultrabooks hitting the market, it's kind of starting to look a little bulky. Yeah. It's 1.05 inches thick, so we're not talking a super fatty bit. But now let's compare it with the Dell XPS 13 Ultrabook here, 13.3 inch Ultrabook. And you can see the difference. Like, oh my god, right? Of course, you get a lot of things in the ThinkPad that you can't get in an Ultrabook, even in second generation Ivy Bridge Ultrabooks. That includes a heck of a lot of ports for one thing. Upgradable RAM on the bottom here. We have your access door so you can get to the RAM and upgrade. You can pop your hard drive out here. And the battery is, of course, removable in Ultrabooks. It's generally sealed inside. RAM is usually soldered permanently on the motherboard. And good luck getting to the hard drive in most Ultrabooks. So more, uh, more extensible, more upgradable, just like you'd expect from a notebook versus an Ultrabook. It also runs cool because you don't have the bottom of the casing right against the CPU. Even the Dell it has carbon fiber on the bottom, so that's a very cool material. It doesn't transfer heat, but the bad part about that is, well, it doesn't transfer heat, so the CPU can run kind of warm. And this guy, there's plenty of room for breathing. Not a problem. Plus, Ivy Bridge CPUs, 22 nanometer process. They run very cool. On this side here, we have our SD card slot. We've got our USB 3.0 port. We have a full-size Ethernet jack right here. No USB adapter needed, as it is with Ultrabooks often. Headphone jack, Kensington lock slot. Again, that's where you access the hard drive. On this side here, this is your fan intake. Another high-speed USB port and your VGA port, your mini display port. I know some of you might complain about that, but this is very versatile because you can get dongle adapters that are 20 bucks or less. Then you can convert this to HDMI uh, to other outputs that you need. And it is mini display port with audio out. So if you've got a monitor with built-in speakers or a TV and that kind of thing, uh, you're good to go. Yet another USB port here for a total of three. And here's your Express Card 5.4 slot. I don't know if anybody actually uses those, but it's there. And here's your wireless on-off slider switch right here. On the front edge, we have pretty much nothing. There's an interesting notch over here. I'm wondering if this might be for uh, those who get the 3G, 4G option and need SIM card slot, if that's going to go there, but it does absolutely nothing on our model. On the bottom, you've got various fan exhaust points, big rubber feet, seriously rubber, big rubber feet, and then rubber feet on the battery as well. Since this is a six cell, it sticks up a bit, so it has its own rubber feet, so the ones on the notebook will probably never contact anything anyway. 
But if you were going to run the four cell with a flat battery, then these would come in handy. Here's your dock port connector. Lenovo always makes a variety of bases, ultra bay kind of things that you can connect on there. And that's about it for the bottom side. In terms of software, you've got the ThinkPad platform 4.0 in here. You know Lenovo, they don't put bloatware on ThinkPads, so there's not a lot of extra junk on here that you don't want. You've got MS Office 2010 Starter Edition, which you can convert into a full version with your product key. Uh, software to drive the webcam. Not a whole lot else on here, and we're not going to complain about that. That's a good thing. They do load Chrome, and you can see that's right down here in the bar. And they're on the little store for buying more stuff to go with your great ThinkPad. They would love if you did that, of course. Temperatures have been quite good. We've been running this, obviously, for about five minutes now to shoot this video. And you can see right here we're using core temp to monitor the core temperatures. And we're at about 39, now going up to 41 degrees centigrade. That's fairly cool. So pretty obviously the big selling point of this is the third generation Intel CPU that's inside. And while we can't give you benchmark numbers just yet, that'll be coming in not too much longer, I can tell you that, yes, it's faster. Uh, this, the CPU speed increases, you know, Intel's claiming about 10%. That's not a huge amount right there to run and upgrade your existing X220 or something like that, or maybe you have an older X201 or something like that. But uh, graphics performance, just as you probably read, Intel HD 4000 graphics, wow, way faster than Intel HD 3000 graphics. And in fact, we have another video that we're going to share with you on YouTube, and we're going to show you games like Skyrim running at native 1366 by 768 resolution, running in the mid-30s for FIPS. That's really good. I mean, we were happy, to, lucky if we could get 19 or 20, maybe, with Intel HD 3000 integrated graphics. And we'd run Mass Effect 3 on this guy, and it's actually playable, and a couple of other titles. And again, we're going to have a separate video, so you can see that if, if you're wondering. And that's obviously one of the big useful things about having this new graphics processor integrated in here is you can actually now use these machines for, for gaming if you want to as well. It's not going to be your dedicated Alienware kind of gaming rig, but obviously if you want to play some games on the road, it's, it's a much more doable thing than it was with HD 3000 graphics. If you want to play today's demanding 3D games, I don't mean those of you who are playing Farmville or something like that, you don't need anything like graphics promised to do that kind of thing. And, and as I said, you're going to have to wait for our full written review to see the actual benchmark numbers, but I can tell you one thing, using the 3D Mark Vantage test, this scores about twice as fast on graphics as does the Lenovo X220 previous model running on Intel HD 3000 graphics rather than the new HD 4000 graphics. That's, that's really good. That's, that's a nice jump. You'll also notice, speed up, notice the speed up in just about everything else that you do that demands graphics. It includes Adobe applications, even the web browser. Anything that's going to draw to the screen is going to show you improved speed. Adobe Flash with hardware acceleration. We'll check out YouTube playback using Adobe Flash. Let's see how that goes. And now we're going to test out Adobe Flash performance, which of course isn't a challenge for any modern recent notebook, but still it's good to see how it's going to perform here and whether it's going to kick up the fan. And we'd show you a really exciting HD movie trailer, but these days I, it, it's just amazing, the issues of copyright and things like that, so sometimes you can actually get in trouble showing a YouTube video in a YouTube video. So we're just going to go with one of our video reviews, and this is an HD 1080p video, and we're going to switch to that resolution. Once the commercial, commercial passes. Now we're at 1080p, we're going to go full screen. And the speakers are at half volume right now. This has Dolby Mobile Audio, so it's good quality audio, but the speakers are loud, but not very full or rich as you hear. So plenty loud, this is only half volume, but again, it could be fuller. Playback is flawless, it looks good. Fan is not kicking up at all. In fact, it really won't go up in temperature very much when you're playing 1080p YouTube video, which is pretty impressive. Speaking of which, Lenovo claims over 9 hours of battery life with the 6-cell battery. Now, you know, manufacturers always claim more than you're going to get, but so far we've been seeing about seven and a half to eight hours with the screen set to about half brightness. It is a very bright IPS display, so half brightness is perfectly permissible, and Wi-Fi on, and just doing a mix of business tasks, working on some MS Office documents, working on Photoshop stuff, streaming some YouTube videos, doing email, that kind of thing. So, yeah, Energizer Bunny right here. 
In fact, it's really remarkable how Lenovo still gets so much stuff into such a small frame. You've got full laptop specifications here, and you've got remarkable battery life, so we'll forgive it for the fact that it's an inch thick. For those of you who do want Lenovo and want something really thin and don't need as much processing power, they do offer the ThinkPad X1, and there'll be the revi revised carbon fiber version of that one coming out this summer. So who is this notebook for? This is for road warriors on the go who don't want to carry around a big, heavy, bulky net notebook, who need a long battery life, and who need serious processing power. If you're just going to do Word, Excel, browse the web, and do your email, you really don't need all the power that's in here. This is for somebody who's doing uh, development in code, who maybe is doing some serious Photoshop and Illustrator work. Uh, you know, more demanding tasks, that kind of thing. Of course, if you just want a powerful machine because you want a powerful machine, well, that's cool, too. But that's really what, what makes this different from Ultrabooks. So that's Lenovo ThinkPad X230, 12.5 inch, super powerful notebook computer. Really nothing else competes with this except for the Sony Vio Z line. If you're looking for a really portable yet really powerful computer, and the Sony Vio Z is a lot more expensive. This is supposed to start at $1179, Lenovo tells us. So it gives you an idea of what it's going to cost you. It has Bluetooth, Wi Fi. Uh, you can choose between different Wi-Fi modules as per usual. Again, you can go with the Gobi modem in there and get your uh, 3G or 4G. I don't believe there's going to be an LTE option, though, and they, they, they'll even have a WiMAX option. Again, the ThinkPad will be available in June towards the early end rather than the latter end, and visit our website by that time, not much longer to wait, to get full benchmarks, full specs, and our full review at mobiletechreview.com.